In this video, we'll start out by looking at a fillet axis point distribution setup. Then we'll look at a setup to create a growth attribute animation. Then we'll move on to some orientation of the petals. We'll also look at the scaling of the petals. After that, we'll use our growth attribute to drive a skeleton blend between the bud pose and the bloomed pose. And then in the end, we'll look at bone deforming the petals onto the skeletons in a for each loop. We're going to drop down a point generate. We just want this thing to generate some points. So I'll set this to 137. This is the number of petals that we want in our setup. So we'll put down an attribute wrangle after this. And here we're going to write a philotaxis shape. So we'll start out by establishing how many points are here and storing that in a variable called num. So int num equals to i at numpt and i at numpt is a protected attribute that Houdini always creates. It just tells you what this number here is. What is the number of points on the geometry? Then we're going to normalize this value between zero and one across our points. So we'll say float u is equal to i at pt num divided by num. If we write this out to an attribute called f at u is equal to u and we can open up our geometry spreadsheet, we'll see that it equals to zero on all of them. This is because both of these values are integers. So we're just gonna convert one of them to a float. And now we can see that the value doesn't quite reach one. That's because this number of points goes to 137 while our point number only goes between zero and 136. So we just wanna say num minus one and put this in parentheses as well. And there we go. Now we have a value between zero and one. We'll say float x for the x value of the position attribute. We'll say that it's equal to sine of radians. We do this because we need to convert any number that's written in degrees into radians. So we'll say radians 137.5. That's the number of the golden ratio. That's the rotation angle. And we'll multiply this by i at pt num. And then here we'll multiply by u. This didn't do anything, but if we say v at p equals to set x comma zero comma zero, we'll see we get this distribution of points here. Now we essentially just need to do exactly the same thing in set. So we'll say float set is equal to cosine of radians 137.5 times i at pt num times u. Now, if we put set into the set component of our position vector, we get this philotaxis golden ratio distribution of our points. Now we're going to add a few more parameters to our philotaxis setup, such as a radius control and the ability to change this angle. And we're going to add the Y component of the position as well before we declare our X and Z variables and we'll say float angle is equal to chf angle if we click this button here we get this parameter called angle now we're going to replace these 137.5 with angle now we just get a straight line if we rewrite this to be 137.5 we get the exact same result we had before then we're going to add a radius control so we'll add a float called radius is equal to channel float radius multiply this by the u variable so we can change this u with radius and now everything jumps to the center so we'll just add the radius parameter and you can see we can now control how large or how small this radius is we'd like a bit more control than that though so we're just going to ramp this u variable here and we'll name it radius ramp if we click this again we get the radius ramp now we can control the distribution of these points and do things like leaving a clear space here in the center which can be quite useful for some flowers now we're going to add the height I'm gonna say float y is equal to so it's a channel ramp we'll name it height ramp and we'll ramp the u variable again and we'll just multiply this by a channel called height and if we add those we now have a height ramp and a height channel it doesn't do anything at the moment because we need to apply it to our position so we'll just replace the zero with a y. If we just invert this, this is a shape you might see in some flowers. Now we're just going to write the angle out to an attribute as well. f at angle is equal to angle. We're going to make a falloff animation that goes from the inside of the shape 
to the outside of the shape. For this, I always use this piece of code that I got from Mark Fancher. So I'll link his video in the description and you can go see his explanation or you can simply copy what's on screen here. You need to have an attribute, which we already do. We have this U attribute, which we can visualize. We control middle mouse button on a node and we press the U. So we can see we already have this attribute that goes from the inside to the outside of the shape. We just want to animate that so it pans across. If we change this float, map is equal to f at map to float map is equal to f at u visualize mask if we drag this position across we can see that the value changes if we increase this transition width we get slightly more fall off so i'll just increase this all the way and we're just going to rename this f at mask to growth so for now i'll just put in a temporary expression in this p which is what animates it so i'll write fit f at frame between 1 and 48 to 0 to 1. now if we play our timeline we can see that this just loops over and over again and we actually just want to invert both this f at u and the resulted growth attribute so we're going to say one minus on both of them and now we have this value going from one on the outside to the inside. So we can visualize better what we're doing. I'm going to get the captured petals and I'm going to copy them onto the points. We need to change both the scale and the orientation of these petals. We're going to start out with the orientation. So we'll add another angle in between here. And this one gets quite a bit vex heavy. But if you try to think about these things as simply being rotations, we're going to be rotating that transform attribute that we were introduced to in the last part. So if we make a matrix, three call it x form it's equal to ident that's just an empty transformation matrix write this out to an attribute called three at transform is equal to x form if we visualize this now we get these gizmos here and you can see that they all align with this gizmo that we have down here in the corner so they're all neutral what we want to do is analogous to taking this transform node here and saying we want to transform the attribute named transform and if we start rotating you can see that these little gizmos start rotating and that's essentially what we're going to do just on a per point basis so we already have an angle which is what we wrote out to an attribute called f at angle and we can just multiply this by the point number and turn it into radians we will use this function called rotate which is really easy to use it's just called rotate you put in three arguments you put in the matrix that you want to rotate which is x form then you put in the angle which we already have in a variable and then you put in an axis so we're going to write set 0 comma 1 comma zero and now we have all of the points rotated we see that it's not quite the rotation that we wanted we actually just need to rotate it another 90 degrees so we're just going to add that in here so we're just going to say minus 90 and now all of the petals are oriented at least along the y-axis in the orientation that we want now we're going to do another rotation just along the set axis this time so i'm going to call that float out angle because we're rotating it out from the shape this will be equal to the radians of a channel called out angle. We're going to multiply that by a ramp. We'll call it out angle ramp. And the value is our U edge. So now if we write rotate X form comma out angle comma set this time on the set axis. So zero comma zero comma one. If we now create our parameters and we increase this out angle. We see that it goes inwards. And if we put it into the minus, it goes outwards like a beautiful flower. I like to just negate this angle here. So it does the opposite. So when you go into the positive, it actually rotates. It just makes more sense to me. And I also find it quite helpful to increase this minimum and maximum value. So I'll just change that to something else. We'll do that by clicking this gear icon here and edit parameter interface. If we click out angle up here, we can change this to be between minus 90 and 90 and hit accept. So now let's set this to 90. If we play around with this ramp, you can see what this does. And now we're going to add a scale control per pedal. So we'll just drop down an attribute adjust float and we'll set this attribute name to size. We're going to set initial and we'll set this pattern type to remap attribute. We're going to remap the U attribute. This doesn't really do anything straight away because we need to scale this three at transform attribute by this size attribute. So we'll just write scale three at transform comma f at size 
Now we get this result, which isn't really what we wanted, but we can just go in this attribute adjust float and use this ramp to control it. And we can set the min and max values here. So you can set it to something like this. In part one of this tutorial, we made this demo setup here of how we could animate just a single petal. So we're just going to duplicate this over. And we're going to remove the skeleton blend. So let's get these philotaxis points. And if we drop down a copy to points, we're going to copy the bud pose onto the philotaxis points. And we'll do exactly the same thing for the bloomed pose. So now we have these two versions of our flower here. We want to do exactly the same as what we did here, where we run a skeleton blend over the two. So we'll drop down a skeleton blend and we'll just input the two poses. And you can see if we change the slider now, they all go into the same single petal here. And that's because of something that we talked about in the last part as well. Kinefix pays a lot of attention to this name attribute here. And if we look through these, we can see that these names repeat over and over again. We have a lot of point zeros, a lot of point ones, etc. And we actually need a distinct name for each of these points that we have here. So to do that, we're just going to drop down a wrangle and we will write s at name is equal to quotation marks point underscore plus i to a, which turns an integer into a string i at pt num. So we're just adding the point number to this point prefix here. Each of the points now has a corresponding name attribute. We'll just copy that into the stream on the other side as well. And straight away, you can see in the viewport, this actually just worked. So if we blend between them now, we blend between these two flower shapes. Now we don't want every single petal to be animated at the same time. So that's why we created that growth attribute earlier on. We're going to use that as this blend masking here. So we're going to say set from attribute and we'll say growth. And if we play our timeline, we can see that each individual petal gets its animation. In this next step, we're going to deform this captured petal onto each of these skeletons. And to do that, we need to do it in a for loop because this petal mesh has been captured onto this single petal skeleton. So if we feed it a bunch of different skeletons, it's going to do exactly the same thing as this blend did before, where it all just falls into one single petal. And we want it to be distributed across each of these. And this is a little bit hard to keep track of, but I'll try to do my best explaining it. And otherwise, you can always download the file and follow along from there. So we're going to drop down a for each named primitive, and we'll change this piece attribute to petal num and we just need to go back to our philotaxis points here and we'll add a wrangle where we say i at petal num is equal to i at pt num so now we have a unique index for each of these petal skeletons but right now this is a point attribute and the for each loop expects a primitive attribute so we're just going to attribute promote our petal num from point to primitive. If we put this into the for each loop now, we now have the exact same result as before, but we're running over each petal one by one. So we essentially want to do this process here with the bone deform at the end, but just inside this for loop, we have the captured petal and we have the petal skeleton. And in this stream here, we have the incoming animation as well. So we have all of the inputs that we need for the bone deform. If we put this here and we put the captured petal and the rest points, and then in this third input, we put our post skeleton, we get this mess. One of the things that we need to do before we can move on is to get back to our old name attribute. Because as we talked about before, this captured petal here has been captured specifically to the name attributes of this individual petal skeleton here. We can just use the same wrangle here again. So if we look at this bone deform now, we can see that it is actually working and these petals are being deformed one by one. So if we look at the attributes on this bone deform now, we can see that we lost our growth attribute and we want to get that back. So we'll drop down an attribute copy and we'll just copy it from this non-overlapping names wrangle. And the attribute name to copy is growth. We can confirm that that's working by turning on the visualizer here for the growth. And we can see how that matches what we had before. We also lost our U attribute, so we'll just put that in here as well. And then 
will add another attribute copy in here to get the primitive attribute called pedal num and we'll set the group type to primitives and down here as well group type to primitives so now we have all of the attributes that we care about right now this runs a little bit slow and we can attempt to speed that up by compiling this for loop so we'll just put down a compile block with this compile begin before the for each begin and the compile end after the for each end and then we can see that it complains a whole lot because it starts to look outside of these object merges here so it looks at what happened before the object merges and we don't really want it to do that and we can avoid that by copying over this for each begin here and we can set it to fetch input and we'll just run this object merge through the for each begin and into the bone deform and we'll do it one more time to get the pedal shape as well and now if we add this compile begin block in between both of them as well it works and now it might run a little bit faster to stay nice and organized i'm going to add a null in here and name that out deformed pose and i'll just add an object merge in between here and get this deformed pose from there so now this is a block on its own kind of